Hey guys, welcome back to another Big Meat Sunday. Thanks for coming back. Today, we're gonna to be doing a Beef Wellington, you guys. Nice holiday meal. We got Christmas coming up and we got a delicious looking beef tenderloin. The whole tenderloin from the boys over at Low Bells of New York. Thank you very much, guys. Tell you what, you guys, it's gonna be killer. We're gonna do this rare, medium rare on the inside. We're gonna coat it on the outside with this delicious slurry of mushrooms and prosciutto. And not to mention that flaky, delicious pastry crust on the outside. You guys are gonna dig this. You must stick around. Okay, so we got this tenderloin looking gorgeous, pulled out of its cryovac. Basically what we're looking to do is just get it right about here, right where that tip falls over. And uh, this is gonna make some killer steaks, as well as you can kind of use this end here for you know stir fry or you know something like that, It'd be awesome. So we'll kill that. And then off to this end, uh, right at the head, where it splits into two, the uh, center portion of the tenderloin becomes a little more narrow. So what we wanna do is just keep it as uniform as possible. So we're gonna use this piece right here for our Wellington. So cast this aside as well. This again will make some phenomenal steaks. Um, you could even do this as a Chateaubriand kind of thing. Uh, but this is truly the, uh, what they call the Chateaubriand, that middle section of the tenderloin. So this is going to be so awesome for our Wellington. Let me get some ingredients together. We'll get this show on the road. All right, so we pulled the butcher's twine off of this. And I tell you what, if that's not just the most beautiful piece of meat you've seen all day, you need to get out more, I think. So what we want to do, lots of salt, lots of pepper, on all sides, get the ends. Very good. All right, so what we're gonna do now, we're gonna take this guy over to the stove, we're gonna sear it off in a screaming hot pan, brown each of the sides for say 30, 40 seconds each. We're just looking for a nice uniform brown on it. Okay, so we just pulled this right off that searing pan Everything is seared off nice and brown. Don't want to overcook it. Just want a nice golden brown. We're going to cover it now while it's still warm with this English mustard, which has got a little more zip, I think, than, um, you know, like standard, say, Dijon or something like that. I'll get all the sides. All right, that looks pretty good. Okay, we're just gonna set this guy aside, let him rest for a little bit. We're gonna handle our mushrooms now. This is gonna be killer. All right, to coat our Wellington, tell you what, you guys, it's gonna be awesome. We have a whole boatload of mushrooms. I think it's probably about a pound and a half. I don't think we'll need all of them, but better safe than sorry, right? We wanna be able to coat that whole thing. It's okay if we have a little leftover, all right? So, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take a bunch of these guys, whoa, throw most of them that don't hit the floor into your food processor. We've got a, a medium-sized shallot. And uh, you can go th between three and five cloves of garlic. I'm going with five just because I'm a garlic fan, right? Time. Everybody needs time. You don't have time? Make some time, right? So a couple of these leaves from this sprig. Yeah. That looks about good. All right. Then we're just gonna pulse it until we get it to like a fine, almost like a grainy paste. All right, so that's about what we're looking for. This stuff is gonna be great. So tell you what, you guys, we're gonna take this, put it in our same pan on the stove. We're gonna just kind of go low and slow heat with this. We're going to get all the water evaporate out of it. And then we're going to wrap up our tenderloin. All right, so our mushrooms are finished. They took about 20 minutes. They don't exactly look pretty, but let's not worry about that right now. What we're going to do, we're going to take some uh, nice thinly sliced prosciutto and we're going to just kind of layer it almost like you're shingling a roof so that 
when we lay down the tenderloin on top of this, it's going to give it a nice seal to keep that delicate pastry dough nice and dry. You see how I'm overlapping them? There. All right, so let me get this finished and we'll start in on that tenderloin. All right, so now we're going to take our mushroom mixture. And you can see it's how dry it is. It's almost uh, like falling apart, kind of crumbly. And we're going to take this and form a nice thin layer out on this prosciutto. All right, that looks like a pretty nice even layer. So here's the hard part. It takes a little dexterity. You take your filet, blah, right in the middle. And if you hadn't noticed, I'm using saran wrap on this. Uh, it's kind of like making uh, beef sushi or something like that. So we're just going to take and roll it up and then keep it tight. I'm going to take the ends, tuck them in. And then roll this guy all the way up. Take the ends. You want to make sure you get that prosciutto tucked in. And you're just going to roll it. Spin it up like that. It's going to form a nice, tight little unit. I'm going to take this, put it in the refrigerator. Eh, 15 minutes, let it cool off. Uh, let the prosciutto kind of chill. Uh, then we'll get our pastry dough out and wrap this guy up. Head him into the oven. Right now would be a good time to warm up your oven, about 400, 425. All right, same thing as the prosciutto. We're going to do this one more time, but now we have our pastry dough out. I have put some cellophane between the cutting board and the pastry dough just to make it a lot easier to roll up. So we just set this guy down here. We want to hit it with a little bit of egg wash around the edges, or not egg wash, but egg yolk. There's the oven. We are preheated. Very nice. All right, same thing as before, guys. Flip and roll. Get it tucked up in there. Roll it out, come back, tuck the edges in a little. Nice little package. Look at that. This is going to be killer, you guys. We're on the home stretch. Okay, so we've got a well-oiled sheet pan here. You don't need to use tin foil. I just use it for the sake of easy cleanup. And we're just going to layer, or rather paint on, some egg yolk. This is going to give it a nice golden brown color. That looks right about perfect, you guys. And lastly, just for a little bit of the sexy, I'm going to take a, a fork and just crosshatch it. And when it's done baking, this is going to look so killer. Like that. And then back up the other direction. And then one right down the middle. Tell you what, you guys, this is going to be so delicious. Get them in the oven. Got about uh, 20, 25 minutes, 425 degrees. See you then. Would you look at this? This thing is crispy, crusty. Just so beautiful looking. I can't wait to dive into it. Let's be careful cutting into it. Don't go slicing and sawing into it. You gotta be gentle. This pastry is very delicate. Let's have a look. Let's get another cut on this. Oh yeah, now that 
is that I'm calling Beef Wellington. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at this. Isn't that phenomenal? Epic. Let's taste it. Mm. My goodness, this is delicious, you guys. The mushroom with the parma prosciutto is ah, so good. Not to mention the first class tenderloin that Lobel's was kind enough to send to us. Absolutely amazing. I hope you guys give this a shot. Thanks again. There'll be a link down in the description box where you can get to Lobel's of New York. Experience some of this amazing beef for yourself. You know the drill. Hit that sub button, give me a thumbs up, and stick around.